Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith, and we're in here at the closing. This is Boat Forks Part 4. Now, the last video, uh, every video, I appreciate the compliments and the comments. In particular, a comment last video there was about indicator hangout, or how far I was extending that small indicator into that bore and measuring, and indicator sag. And... Yeah, sometimes I just get flying on on my way and on a path, and sometimes it's go to. Sometimes I overlook some very important things. There is unbelievable indicator sag capabilities. I got a little sample here, just a square indicator here and a foot against here. I actually put a wide flat on there because even if I turn this sideways, you're gonna see the scale will bend side to side. Okay, now I'm zero there, but as I bring it down, I'm 10. And if I rotate this around, it will be minus 10. And that's exactly what I was off on my first bore, was 10 thousandths. I set it up because I wanted to sweep the middle of that egg shape. And when I first touched, I was sweeping where my first thought was, is to sweep and take all the material out of the top. So I ended up having to jack the thing up with uh, my screw jacks, indicators on the bar. I didn't have to remove the bar. It didn't, it didn't really slow me down too much to adjust it. So all I, all I had to do was jack it up so that I took that 10 thousandths out. All right, side to side was reading fine. It didn't have this, the indicator sag did not affect me side to side enough to validate me moving this in and out. All right, I got my video footage from the first one and I'm gonna add in some of here. I tell you what, I got a camera over there. I got a camera up here. The camera you're looking at now that uh, normally makes you seasick. I've removed that stabilizer in there. We'll give it a shot. Maybe you won't need so much drama me. <laughs> and I also have this camera. And sometimes just, it, it might be a little bit shaky for me holding it, but it's gonna get you in an area where I just don't have a, an area to set up a tripod or a fixed point. Um, and I might throw some of that in there. All right, let's get on with the video. Anyhow, when we go to touch off here, we will probably be watching it skip the back side and the front side before we hit up and down. And that's my, uh, that's my uh, best guesstimate of what's gonna be going on here before I even get started. All right, now I have, uh, I have four bits here that I kind of just dug out and these are, these are normally bits that I would be hogging off, and they have uh, a compensated uh, positive action on the tip there, and they have a lead angle to the side for increasing a little bit of the tool pressure, plenty of clearance on the back side so you're not rubbing behind there. Um, here's a, um, I think it's a piece of cobalt here, it's made in Sweden. I've had it for a while and it basically it's almost straight on the end it's got plenty of clearance and rake on the back side here i do have a little tiny bit of a chip breaker in there it kind of makes a uh, um, a nice positive action cutting um i was tempted to put this one in here but i don't know because i haven't been through here and we're just taking just a little bit there i think i want to go for the the carbide to be my first choice of of trying it through here i ground a little extra relief on the back side here it has um a pretty shallow leading edge it has a little bit of a positive action here and it's fairly pointed and it has a lot of back relief on here now my bar the hole in my bar is actually offset so that this is close to being real center uh, on the bar coming out all right so we're going to go ahead we're going to set this one up here and we're going to roll the bar over we're going to touch off the side and then we're going to fire this baby off and we're going to go on through and um, let's see what we got for our first pass through here okay one of the questions was is uh how much weight can your carriage take um i would i would say probably on this lathe carriage here um i I would guess you'd probably start maxing it out about four or five hundred pounds. And uh, this piece of iron here is, I'm, uh, 
I'm saying maybe 300 pounds at the most there. Two guys comfortably uh, pick it up and throw it in the back of a pickup truck. Anyway, you see how easy my carriage goes back and forth. And I'm making sure the most important thing is, is keeping oil under the ways. And keeping it guiding and sliding. Okay, now let's focus on our tool bit. All right, I know I'm always going to get asked, what is this square insert in, in this boring bar? It has a threaded hole in this end here so that we can adjust the, the tool bit in and out. This flat spot right here is for mag base to sit on and then I can run the indicator on. And then I have two set screws to come in here. And they're all incorporated into this, this sleeve. When you Google search this sleeve, you want to start out with the, the words low carbon, square tool bit sleeve. And you'll probably come up with a website from mscdirect.com and uh, that's where they're at. But the whole thing is, is they start off their listing with low carbon and that throws everybody off. They all go tool bit sleeves and they'll search all day long and they'll ne they won't find anything. Put in low carbon first and you'll find those. All right. We got our bit here and our adjustment, the adjustment on these sleeves is only so long. So you have a little bit of play with and then you gotta, you gotta do something to get your bit to come out. And okay, so it, it, it adjusts it in and out this way here. Of course it's hollow and you can push your bits out with the size hex even. Okay, and push it back in. All right, now we know that 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 adjustment is about where I want it to be to start and we're nowhere near being out far enough for that to be touching the wall of the bore. So what I like to do is just a couple ball bearings. One isn't quite far enough. It only comes out that far and you can see here that we still got to come out at least another half an inch. So I go ahead and I drop another ball in there. Now, now we're out there. The, the pusher is hollow in the middle, so the ball automatically sets down into that hex. And then one ball on the other ball, they just touch at the end, so it's pinpoint connection. And you can hold the accuracy of adjusting and pinpointing. It's not like it's going to wobble around on you. All right, and then your 532 Allen here tightens this down. All right, now what I'm going to do first is I'm going to make sure that I'm back far enough. Okay, I'm back. I'm back as far as I want to be there. I'm going to come in here. Okay, we come into our bore and we put our Allen in here. We slightly loosen this, we hold this out to the bore, and we tighten it up, and then we come out of there. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and tighten that Allen, and I'm just making sure that that is tight. Everything is tight so that I'm not going to vibrate loose while it's traveling through there, um, and, and things don't go flying out of there. All right, so I just barely, barely touched that. So it should be, it should be touching there. Unless when I tighten this down, it sucked it in just a tiny bit. It should be touching over here and it should be clearance top and bottom. Let's see if that's the case. All right, let's give it some gear here. And uh, I think I'm just gonna spin this about 260 RPMs or so to test it out here. Okay, I'm feeling it just touching. I think it's lightly skipping that. A little bit on that side and a little bit on the top.
Okay, I'm gonna look at that trace pattern. It's about, it is touching about nine o'clock there, and we're gonna, we're gonna take a look at it. And make a decision on letting it run through there or not. It is making a sweep. Okay, we're gonna put we're gonna put the cutter directly down at the bottom because we're not hitting there and we're going to travel to the other side making sure that we don't rub all the way through there and then we're going to fire it up on the other side and we're going to back it back the back the the cut into it and we're going to see where we're at all right now I'm gonna Okay, we're we're skipping on that side down over there about about three thirty four o'clock, and then we're up there about eleven o'clock when I stare into the hole from this side. Barely barely skimming that. Okay, I've got my inside spring calipers that I bent so I can stick them into the bore. And what I'm doing is I'm just going to go from the side that wasn't cut over to the side that we did cut and cut. Um, and. All right. And with our micrometers here. Four inches, four eighty nine. And our tight side was four inches, four eighty-three to four inches, uh, four eighty-six or so. Um, so really, we only it, we were probably skimming at the most maybe three thousands off of that side there. That's what it's telling me. Um, all right, but this is very promising. We're 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 in there, and we're not hitting top or bottom. And I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take uh, I'm going to take five thousandths on this next cut here. So let's let's adjust this out five thousandths. Okay, let's bring this back far enough where we can get an indicator in here and measure our amount we're going to take. All right, we try to get the indicator straight up and down as much as possible, and then we can 
kind of angle it back here. We can set it at zero. We like that. And actually, if we get it right on the top of that point there, that tip, if it slightly moves around or whatever, tighten it up, bringing it back, it'll stay pretty close right there. All right, we like that. <clears throat> okay, and Alright, we moved it out five thousandths and we lightly snug up our jacking screw underneath there so it doesn't vibrate. And we're ready to rock and roll for another cut here. Alright, now that surface finish in there. Looks just a little bit a little bit rough. We might We'll go through one more time here. We'll see what it looks like here. We might actually uh, roll this bit here a little bit over. You know what you can do? Probably hit it with just a little tiny bit of stone right now. Not that we're going to stone that five thousandths off of there. <laughs> Just take that real sharp edge off of there. Okay. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to put it in auto feed. We may also uh, throw some oil, you know, sulfur based cutting oil in on it, but we're going to let it run. We're going to take a look at it. Starting to pick up a little bit more out here. It didn't pick up until it was in there a ways. It's got a little hollow on the top. It is starting to catch the other side over there. All right, we're going to let that one run through. Okay, let's get in here and set up our indicator. And we're shooting this for our last, our last cut here. We're gonna take five. This finish, after we stoned that tip, that finish really did clean up a little bit better. Okay, and just trying not to hit anything there. Am I gonna make this here? Looks like I am. All right, there we go. There's a full five thousandths. All right, here we go.
We do have a little tiny holiday down at the bottom. This side was 5,000s more than the other side there, so we'll see. I think it, it looks like it's closing in a little bit, so it might be drifting down. It might be more bell mouth on this end here. We'll just have to see if it continues in. The, the angle cut actually shows that it might be just a little, little hol holiday. And that just took a big jump in. It's getting closer to sweeping the bottom anyway. Pretty decent finish. And we will run some kind of a hone through this. I think I have a uh, ball hone for cylinders about this size just to go down through and just kind of like give it a a hone finish versus a machine finish it is so close to being all the way around at the bottom right now it's okay we're right down to the nitty gritty and I'm just checked the okay I just checked the diameter on the bore up and down and we're right at four inches five ten and the width were four inches five seven and our actual bore dimensions that we measured down there with the snap gauges and the inside micrometers was uh, four inches five oh three five inches five oh four um, and we're at seven and just a couple pictures of looking at this you can see that it, it it's almost skimming the bottom on this side it's lightly the pictures on the other side there there's a couple streaks that actually go all the way around um, but it is lighter on the bottom as well what I'm saying is is we we projected to take it out to this diameter and then almost have it finish up at our bore diameter and to be within I don't know five five ten thousandths finish size of the largest diameter we have in the bore I think we accomplished our our mission in minimizing the amount that we had to take off of each of the sides there we were actually e pretty equal I think we're probably a couple thousands heavy on the on the far side than we are on this side here a little bit of room for air our finish is fabulous we're gonna take I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and put in uh, let's see three and seven this ten let's see just safely I'm gonna I'm gonna um, I'm gonna put in three per side. That should uh, that should take it out to six. Large, in, increase the diameter by six thousandths. And if we're somewhere around five, five sixteen, five seventeen, um, and a full sweep circle around, we should be in really good shape. Okay, from the <clears throat> from the other side there, I was able to measure the mean diameter of the bore. And we came up with uh, four inches, five fourteen. Um, we finished this bore up within t ten thousands over what our, our our biggest diameter was. We, we had five uh, oh three, five oh four. We ended up being five fourteen. All right. So I'm gonna pull the bar out of here because I'm I'm happy with what we have here. Put this in neutral. Rotate this around. So dragging a bit through there or go ahead and pull it out now and don't forget to roll it over to pick up our ball bearings there we go okay now I can bring it back this way a little bit and we'll go ahead and undo our chucks so let's go we'll do uh, one and, and four. See now we're straddling that flat there. My bore is three and an eighth or so, and there might have been chip in there. Uh, 
Okay, with that out of the way, excellent. And this shows that extra little holiday on that side. Let's see, what do we got here for a chip collector there? Okay, grab all of these chips here. Okay, and All right, get a couple good photos of down the bore. Little trace of the grease from the grease groove there in the center. You can see that the grease going up into the bore there. Okay, now here on this side here, you see the little spot that we were talking about. That was a light holiday, but the scrapes are going right across that. So um, we got to hone this. I'm just, I don't think that's going to affect the fit of this at all. We're going to be given a, a good press fit. Very, very happy with that bore. Okay, let's sweep it on down here. And right here, okay, down at the bottom. What's that zero? We got plus 10 there, we're about 3 there, and we're plus 10 there. Back down to our 0. See how quick that 0 kind of goes right there? Alright. Now, this runs pretty true across the top, back and forth. And we have, within 2000s, this 4-pointed and this 4-pointed. And we're, gonna, we're happy with that. Now, this is just a mag base with a short indicator, and you can see how stout that is. There's minimum amount of indicator sag on there. So, I'm ready to go ahead and pop this off of here, slide my bar in, and then get ready to set up and then compare my first touch off with the touch off that I'm showing you right now. All right, we're still using that same tool bit that we used on the other one. I did dress this up just a little bit. And she's sharp. All right, we slide her in and we go ahead and give ourselves a little bit of light here. All right, we're inside the bore there. Now I'm gonna hold this thing out to the bore because we're, we're tight on both of these on the sides and we're splitting the difference up and down. And that's the same thing we set up and did last time and now I'm going to reach in here lightly snug that we're pretty close or we're touching it left a little line there so I'm going to take it that we're touching all right I'm going to take my shut off my light there and bring it back here some more Lightly bring the adjustment up to the bottom, just like we did in the first one there. And that's to keep that from vibrating loose, falling out, and rolling around in the bore. Not that that's ever happened before. <laughs> huh. um, double check here. Okay. All right. Now, this is where we were on the first one. And then we... We noticed that we touched here. We were touching up here on the top. And truly what we ideal was to be skipping over here and over here on this side. All right. We're going to run the same speeds and everything else because everything worked perfectly fine on the last bore. And when things go really well, there's no sense in messing them up, right?
I am just barely touching on that side there. I mean, like right at eight, nine o'clock. And over here at three o'clock. All right, I'm gonna let that run through. Let's let that run. I'm gonna walk around the other side. Okay, let's get the indicator on, on the tip here. And let's set zero. Make sure it's on there pretty good. Okay, that's in there. <clears throat> there we go. All right. Okay, two hits. Hear it? Void on the top, void on the bottom. We're clipping along both sides. Excellent. Okay, we just took this measurement from the other side because we got two areas that are straight away from each other that we can get the spring calipers in there to measure. And uh, we're four inches, 490 right now. And if I take this, because we're just, this is the second time it's come out the end and within about a quarter inch, it stops cutting um, because it, it it just right there, and I can I can just feel just a tiny little bit of probably a thou or two. Let's go ahead and we'll measure it. Get in here. Okay, and. The reason why it's not cutting there is because that diameter is four inches, four hundred and ninety nine, just under four and a half, just under four and a half. All right, so we take another five and it should be either kissing both of these sides here or I know it'll be completely coming out on that one, but it, it should start touching over here. We are getting a majority of the length of the bore cut on this side right now, um, but the other side is still the heaviest, but both both mouths almost look exactly equal as far as up and down and side to side. What's cutting, what's not cutting. See if I can blow some of these chips out of the bottom here. There, maybe you can see the cutter. Okay, we're just starting to sweep that bottom and the top. We're almost all the way around on this side. This side here was the smaller of the two and closer to being right on the money.
It's fading out, but it's still cutting to about down to that, that distance there. <clears throat> okay, I got to take my light off the other side. <laughs> there. I'm kind of liking that uh, Makita light there, two-tone level LED, really nice. Vince gave that to me. All right, we're done with that cut there. Zero, and Okay, that's three. Three, and make sure we got that tight underneath there. All right, I think we're ready to go. This is it. It's going to be our last cut. All right, we're sweeping, we're sweeping uh, all the way down to the bottom, all the way around. Okay, uh, we were almost satisfied with our last cut there, but we went ahead and decided to take another two thousands per side. Because we mic'd it up and we were still about uh, 4 inches 5 0 oh, 13 or 5 13 4 inches 5 13 Got one little tiny spot right here. And that little tiny hole is about the size, about the size of a dime, is uh, four inches five twenty, and our bore right now. Of course, we'll we'll take final dimensions when they get out of here. But with my spring calipers, I'm usually within a thousandth. Fourteen or fifteen. So I okay. I'm happy with my hole. Let's uh, let's pull this bit, pull the bar out of here. Let's get the part down and get the jig changed out and start on some bushings. All right, 
I do have to hone this hole out just like I did the other one and I got my bearings out of there okay and Pretty hole. All right, let's grab the hone. Okay, we just got some uh, ZEP 45 that we're uh, using to lubricate the balls on the hone here. Just keep it wet. I just want to make sure, because I know where I'm going, I just want to make sure that I'm going in and out of the hole all the way. Okay, I'm just trying, I'm not trying to make it hone smooth, just knock all the really um, tops of the machine surface there. And uh, so we get, we get a, a, a smooth but grippy bore is the best way that I'm going to try to explain it. And uh, when I get it wiped out and we get down on the floor, we'll get a chance to see that. Find a rag to wipe that out. Here we go. All right. Hear it? Okay, and one last thing. We'll go ahead and we'll snap it with our snap gauges. And uh, just double check and make sure that everything is kosher before we pull that out of there. Mm -hmm. 